Hey guys, um, today I'd like to uh, say uh, that letter is very well written and uh, it touched base on everything that I uh, totally speak of. Now on for um, a better little info session. Um, a few days ago, me and uh, Jess were down at the PDD office on accounts that I needed better um, services, because as you all know that I still have PDD. Unfortunately, what is uh, geared here in Edmonton does not work because <laughs> it's all a funnel system for which doesn't work for uh, those with spectrum disorders or hidden disabilities like us, those that are able to live on their own and do things who need more of a one-on-one -on -one coaching system that Edmonton does not provide. Anyway, uh, while I was there, um, yes, I invited Jess to uh, be a part of one of my many meetings that I've had over the years with PDD, and uh, he noticed one ongoing thing. Not only did uh, the workers there treat me like I was subpar, but uh, they loved treating me like a child, as in the baby talk and the talk over me, not with me, and the let's do this and not do that. And, uh, you know, and that isn't right. And, uh, Jess also noticed that, uh, the workers were also looking at him in regards to what I wanted. And instead of talking at me and he kept on gesturing, why don't you talk to her? You know, but they kept on wanting to talk to him instead of me. And that's not right. Like, they, um, when I suggested what I wanted, which was the individualized, uh, family managed part of the end of, uh, PDD, they, um, skirted around the subject a lot. Um, they suggested one thing or another thing, but not what I wanted. And then to top it all off, they basically said we should, I should also seek out counseling and or mental health for my needs for which. I, if I wanted that, I would have stated that. And I was quite clear as to what I wanted. And they still skirted around me, talked around me, above me, not at me. And um, yeah, this is what PDD means these days, guys. Sorry. <laughs> um, then to top it all off, um, they um, pretty much ignored my request and almost ignored Jess's request on my behalf. And it uh, pretty much went nowhere at that meeting. And I was ready to uh, get right ticked off. Um, not meltdown mode, just pissed. Because I was not being treated like I was human. I was not being talked to and uh, basically ignored. And that's not right, especially if you're your own guardian and you have all these abilities, but you have other issues that uh, cause things to be not as society would call as normal or acceptable. <laughs> anyway, um, try as I might, um, I'm glad that I uh, managed to get Jess in and open his eyes to uh, the world of PDD and how people like us get treated through government systems such as that. And that's what I mainly did was not only did I take one for the team, but I also gave Jess a huge eye-opening educational experience that he would have never, never otherwise have seen on a personal scale because, well, if uh, you work in government, it's a side that you will never see, especially if people see you as normal, but you might. And yes, Jess does have ASD, guys. So unless you didn't read his little autobiography that we posted in here quite some time ago, um, just keep on scrolling. You'll find it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, he uh, really felt dismayed and felt like I was not being treated as I should be and given the respect I should have been given. And this is uh, not right. And 
they were not willing to listen to me or even get that. And that is something that me and Jess are still um, going to be fighting over and getting for me. And uh, hopefully we'll open the doors even further for the PDD and getting rid of that IQ test. And yeah, yeah, we're still going to be fighting for you guys. And uh, I hope more, more and more and more of you start talking and start saying something. I don't care if it's video or a letter or otherwise. I want it on my, uh, on this, uh, in this group because your words matter. You matter. And it's up to you as a community for which I am standing up for, and same with Gonda, but we need your stories, we need your words, and you need to stand up, stand out, no matter how afraid you are. Every time I step out and go and talk to, a, go and bug a politician at their um, uh, office or at one of their um, little parties, do you know how afraid I am? Every part of me is screaming and wanting to fly away and run away. But no, I choose to stay there despite my issue and I continue on my merry way and get what I need to say out and only hope that others will listen. I really, really hope that all of you start talking because it is needed. And if you want better for Alberta, it is up to you to say something. We have to do more than just letters and such, I mean, after the elections, I would like to do um, petitions where we all go door to door and say, okay, can you sign this for us? Because we need this in our community. Because some of us have children and those kids, as cute as they're, they are, cute only goes so far. The reality is, is that they're going to be 40 if they're high functioning and still living at home. And you will be 80 with health issues of your own. The best way to have independence is to allow for services to help us. I'm not saying having someone take over your guardianship or your independence. I'm saying have someone in your life for the rest of your life that will help you in your weakest times or in your areas that you're weakest. That's what uh, community coaches are for, for those like us. These services are needed and Right now, there is none, and it's wrong. Your kids will grow up. We don't need another generation of adults falling through the cracks because society chooses to ignore them. That's all I got to say. Thanks.